me to show you how to make something out of nothing. Well, having said that, there uh, are a couple of things that you will need. Firstly, you'll need a t-shirt like this with paint stains on. That's very important, an old t-shirt. You'll also need a ruler, square, a pencil, and a saw of some description. The end of an old waterbed or well, the side of an old waterbed doesn't make much difference and of course most importantly you will need a copy of Bob Luttrell's Aussie INPA plans to build a hive and that's what I'm about to do to build a square hive for Australian native bees and so the first step is for me to remove the foam and the felt and the plastic off this piece of uh, pine which happens to be 36 millimeter thick which is why I've chosen it because that's what the plan recommends. So I'll come back after I've done that. There's my timber all cut out. I have my base and top and I have enough timber for one, two, three, four frames. I even have enough left to make a, a honey super. So that's all done in about uh, 20 minutes. And okay, so I didn't use a handsaw, I know. But uh, now the plan calls for two holes to be drilled or countersunk for each side. So whenever I have to do multiple things like that, what I do is just simply make up a template out of just a scrap piece of wood, drill two holes in that and then I simply use that to overlay my timber, mark that with a pencil and it just makes the job so much easier. So now I'm going to drill a few holes and I'll speak to you again soon. Couple of uh, quick tips now. Um, whenever you drill a hole, the point of entry is generally pretty smooth, but the point of exit can sometimes be a little bit uh, nasty. Well, I'm going to countersink these holes now for the screw heads that I'm about to put in. So I'm going to drill in from this side here. So I'll finish up with a nice clean hole all the way through rather than having to get some sandpaper out or something and tidy these areas up here. Another point worth remembering, if you have a drill that has an adjustment on it like that where you can set the distance the drill travels, it's worthwhile making that adjustment so that when you are countersinking it will just go down to the required amount and then stop and that way all the holes are the same length. Now the plan calls for a 37mm hole to be drilled into the base to a as part of the drain hole, so I'm about to do that now. Uh, I have a 35mm spade bit, so I'm sure the bees won't mind if it's 35 or 37, so I'll just do that now. Okay, the wood's in position, I've clamped it in place, and again I have set the depth for the spade bit, so I can't drill down too far. Okay, one last hole to drill now and I have to drill a hole in through the board into the hole that I just drilled down there. Now, I'm going to show you another little trick. 
Okay, we, we, I've clamped my baseboard to the bench and I have to drill a hole into here. Now it's easy to see when you're drilling any movement left and right, but it's also it's pretty hard to, to tell and to judge when you're moving up and down. So what I do is, if I push the drill down tightly, so it's flat on the top of the piece that I'm drilling, and I have a tiny little level here, and with a piece of blue tack, I just simply position that in place so that is level and then I can tell straight away when I'm drilling if I'm going up or down so I can monitor this way the left and right movement but this one the level will also monitor the up and down movement for me so I'm about to drill that now So there's the drain hole in my baseboard finished and it looks fairly similar to what's on the plan there. I started this hole here slightly below the center line so it does actually go uphill into the drain hole so anything that gets into that drain hole uh, will actually run out through there to the outside world. That's the theory anyway. It's not lunchtime yet. I started at 9 o'clock this morning. I've had a coffee break and it's not 12 o'clock. I have all my hive components cut out and drilled. Now I do have to do some routing, a groove around the inside according to the plan, but because there's multiple ones to be done, I'm going to make a jig. I'm going to make up a, a holder to do this to make it uh, a lot easier. So it'll take me some time to set this up, but once I've got it set up it'll make uh, the repetitive uh, routing a lot easier. So I, uh, I hope you've enjoyed it so far. I've still got the t-shirt on with the paint spots, that was an important thing to remember. And you have also got a cap on now because I've been working outside. So there I have a baseboard, I have a lid, I had one, two, three, four levels and even the super all cut to size and drilled. So next stage, routing. Now I did mention before I'm a great uh, believer in recycling so I'm going to make a jig just out of some scrap pieces that I, wood I had lying around including the off cuts and bits left over from the, the waterbed and why I'll be using those is because they're the same size as that so I can make up a, a holder like that run the router across the top and they'll be exactly the same size so hopefully that will work Well that's it, all the routing is done and if you think it was, wouldn't be worth making up one of these little jigs, it took me probably oh, half an hour maybe out of scrap material so it cost me nothing to make, the price of maybe a dozen screws. Um, but did I think it's worth it? Most definitely because the time saved, you saw how quickly I was just routing those things out so it's well worthwhile doing that. Now if I make some more up I've got, some, I've got this ready to go. If I don't, it's cost me nothing. In fact, I still think it's saved me time. Just one little point though, if you are making up something like this, all I did was to get some timber the same thickness of this, which was just off cuts, and just glued them around the block like that. One thing to make sure, if you're doing that, and that is it doesn't matter how you cut them, there always will be one that will be just a little bit higher than the other, a little bit bigger. So make sure that's the one that you get. You can see, just go along, you can just tap them in and you'll find that one that won't move. So make your mould around that one 
and then you know that all the others will definitely fit in there. Now it's time for me to go and start putting them together but that's enough for today. Looking up it's temperatures approaching 30 degrees and that's way too hot for me so uh, what I might do is go in have a shower sit down in front of the computer and see what I've got on this video. Just before I do go inside though I thought I'd show you how I how these just assemble. They assemble together quite easily. You have one end with holes drilled in so the end with the holes drilled in but up to the end that doesn't the end with the holes drilled in butts up to the end that doesn't the end of the holes drilled in butts up to the end that doesn't so that simply gets glued and screwed together like that So you can see there that there's, there's a ledge for the bees to uh, build their or store their ceremony on if they want, but they can't get to the outside. So it's a very nifty little design. Okay, the last side to get put on goes on like so. That's it, done. Now all it has to do is to drill the, the entrance. I've actually done two already, so. For some people this hive will now be finished as soon as I drill the entrance holes in, but others that want to follow the pan completely and put in some separators they will have to go on to this next step now and that's route out the rebates as shown on the plan so that's what I'm about to do now. Next comes the routing section which involves coming in five mils up two and a half and across 19. Well my router bit is 19 mils so that's one pass with that and then I'll increase it up another two and a half mil and route the inside of it. What I'll be doing now I've just clamped some timber around my router table in a position something like that. We'll go outside now and I'll show you what I've done. Okay here's how I've set up my router bench to cut around the inside like that. I've just set that up so I can push this in, route straight down, lift it up and just, just do that and I finish up with a rebate that runs around the inside like that. That's the first one, the 90 mil wide, it's in 5 mil deep. And it's just a matter of measuring from the tip of the router to, um, to where you put your stop. And likewise for that there and there like that. This is only a precaution just to stop it jumping out, and which occasionally it tends to do, or tends to try to do. But I'll uh, do one now and just show you how quick and easy it is.
There's the finished rebate. Okay, now it's time to put the chamfer around the top. Now if you're wondering why I put this resting block on here when the this bit has got its own guide, well, I'll show you why. The reason is quite simple. For this particular router bit, the hole happened to be in just the wrong spot. So as I was sliding it along, it would duck in like that. So I did that on the first one and realized what the problem was. So by putting that guider there, I could just steer it straight through and the router bit wouldn't pull the timber in and uh, and create an uneven bevel on the, on the top. Well there it is, the job's all but finished. All I have to do is to drill the entrance holes. Now the plan does call for a, a 13mm hole to be drilled in which enters just underneath this internal bevel so that the bees will then um, climb up and enter that way. But I'm going to drill that but I'm instead of doing a countersink I'm actually going to use a 20 mil bit so I can connect to the outside world with a piece of 19 mil electrical conduit because that's what I've used for all my other hives and this hive will actually be sitting inside another insulated box so I need a means of connected to the outside world and I'm going to maintain that standard so that I find that works very very well because if you need to connect it to anything else or a feeder, then the standard 13mm um, garden poly pipe will just fit straight in there. So that's that's what I use. Okay, a couple more things to do, and uh, one is to fit our fixed separator. I have just drilled and countersunk a hole in each corner. So it's just a very, very simple matter now of uh, screwing these onto here, like so. Now, here's one I prepared earlier. So the fixed, the free one just sits on top of that like that and the fixed one just fits over there like that. So you can, you can see that, that it sits in the rebated section and it's all nice and flat and there's still enough of a rebate left there just to, to lock in and, and uh, hold it together. I have drilled the holes. for the entrance in each of the supers and I have then sealed them up I don't know if you can see that or not I'll zoom in I've sealed that with a bit of the, the bees own ceremon so none of the entrances are in fact open to the outside world so each of the entrances is sealed just like that so it's up to the bees to make up their mind which entrance they want to use. They may even use the drain. I thought I'd show you the honey super. Uh, I made it exactly the same as the, uh, the regular supers, although I really didn't have to um, put the uh, chamfer on the top, but uh, I did. And I rebated was the same, except that I've increased the rebate here for the thickness of this piece of timber. So that's got a solid timber base with a, a slot along there of about uh, oh, 12 millimeters. So that is the honey super. And the last component that I did, I finished the top off just with uh, 
some timber all the way around and I put some polystyrene foam in there just to act as a uh, as a bit of an insulator as well even though this will be sitting in another box now I will mention that I have constructed this out of scrap pine uh, simply because it will be sitting in another insulated heated box if this was uh, being made by someone up north then uh, I dare say they'd be looking at beech or some other other timber and not uh, not pine because it just doesn't weather as well even if it was painted so um, I'll, that's important to mention that uh, being in a cooler climate I will be putting this inside an insulated heated box so let me put it all together and show you refresh your memory we have the baseboard now I did change the position of the hole on here on the uh, a bit further on in the video I, sh I showed uh, demonstrated me drilling it in from here so it was actually on the left side I have changed the position on that so it is from from the right side and I have plugged that up with ceramic as well so we have our baseboard we have our base super which has no separator in it of course it just sits straight on there then we have the first of our free separators and the first of our supers with the fixed separator we go again with exactly the same thing we have a honey super that sits on top of that now I have just used a bit of uh, polyethylene to make a viewing panel to sit up on top of there and there's my lid or my cover with the hole cut out to, to go to that entrance there. I will make a small section of uh, 19mm electrical conduit to go in each one of these and they will go to the outside world so the bees can make up their mind which ones they want to use and I have a spare super so eventually when it comes time to do a split I will be able to do the split and with this design it will uh, not be traumatic or as traumatic on the hive well there you have it I hope you've enjoyed the project in which I've shown you how to turn what was an old waterbed into a wonderful little hive for Australian native bees and don't forget in the process we still have our jigs and templates left so if we need to make some more we can but from that one waterbed side I had enough to make that and also a spare super for splitting and that was all with just a, I guess a few simple tools a little bit of time and of course the most important ingredient a t-shirt with a bit of paint on it must have that okay I hope you enjoyed the project thank you very much for watching mm -hmm.